Hi guys, welcome to the DYF, the Disciples Youth Fellowship Bugolobi, and welcome to today's fellowship. My name is Esther Mirela Kajove Mboijwana Mwiza. Too many, choose two. Mirela Mwiza, and I'm so blessed to moderate today and be here with you. Please let us know where you're watching from. Right now, I'm in Bugolobi. Spring Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kindly let us know where you're watching from down in the comments, the live chat, and yeah. We are blessed to have you, and this year's theme is One in Christ. This month, we talk about abiding the word, and today, we are talking about abiding in the word of provision, finances, and generosity. Generosity. That English word. So yeah, welcome to today's fellowship. And right about now, we are going to dive into praise and worship. Yeah. And I close my eyes to see my King in majesty. Your grace compels my soul to love and draw. Desperate for your presence, longing. 
Hi guys, welcome back from Praise and Worship. I know it was awesome. I hope you're on your feet, like your toes, singing and thanking God for good life. Yeah, so we are going to dive into the word. We have to feed our souls. Yeah, keep spiritually intact. And today's preacher is Arthur Opio. Like I said, today's word is abiding in the word of 
provision, finances, generosity. Be blessed. Praise the Lord, DYF members. It's good to have you for this Thursday fellowship. My name is Arthur Moses Kimo Pio, a.k.a. Arthur Kimo, former youth chairperson of the Disciples Youth Fellowship. I'm privileged to be here this Thursday online in this virtual fellowship to share with you some key things on our theme, One in Christ, but in regard with finances, generosity, and, you know, provision. I'm very excited, and I hope you are too. I want to start with a small story. A story is told of a local LC man who actually lived in the areas of Bugolobi. Uh, people would come to his home with all sorts of issues, and whenever they would come, it would be either a husband has beaten a wife, or there are people who are looking for shelter. And this man opened up his home, not just to solve, you know, political issues within the community, but to also provide food and shelter. And such an act depicts the heart of God in very many ways. Another story is told of a man. This is a story that probably you've read about, that this man used to, you know, whenever people would die in the village, all he would do is send money so that, you know, they would do whatever they would have to do. But when this guy at some point, I think, passed away or he lost someone, his gate was wide open and people would just pass by. What a tragedy that is. You know, there is this man, the late Dr. Miles Munro. He once said that the greatest tragedy on earth is not death, but living a life without purpose. Today I want to show you from scripture what it really means to be one in Christ. Because in Matthew 25 and verse 36, it says, this is the NLT version, I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. It is written that when it is within your power to help someone in need today, do not postpone, do not tell them come back tomorrow because the need is for today. And what we see from scripture in Matthew 25, it's talking about the present moment. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. That depicts the heart of God. How can we be one in Christ? If we look at things happening around us that need our attention and we don't pay attention to them and we don't run out to help, how can we be one in Christ if we do not do such things? Anyway, today I want to give you some few pointers that will prepare us to always, you know, kind of have something little in our hands or even our time, or even our money, our resources that will push us to do things that will continue to build that oneness in the kingdom of God. I'm going to talk about the ESI model. ESI model was coined by my friend Edward Hire, and it stands for earning, saving, and investment. But in all this also comes the whole aspect of generosity. Yesterday I was listening to Dr. Miles Munro, and he said this, Excellent people will conquer what average people will complain about. Listen to this. Excellent people will conquer what average people will complain about. And he says, excellent people will pursue solutions while average people will stare at problems. The whole aspect of Matthew 25 shows what an excellent person in the kingdom of God is. It shows that person who is connected to, you know, the very root of Christ in our kingdom. The person who runs out to clothe the naked. The person that runs out to bring water to that person who is thirsty. The person that runs out to visit that person who is in prison. The person who comes out to care and show that, you know what, it's not about my pride out there. It's not about what I have, but it's about what I can do with what I have. It has been attributed to Maya Angelo, and she said this, that People do not care how much you know until they, they know how much you care. I think that is very important. So Miles Munro continues to say that 
excellent people make improvements while the people who are not excellent will only make excuses they'll say i don't have money those are the guys who settle for the average anyway as we get down to talk more about this it has been said by forbes that the bible directly mentions over 800 times and makes over 2000 financial references it has been said before that you know poor people think about money while rich people think about things and wealthy people think about ideas I, ideally wealth is an idea and some of the youth you know you're listening to me right now you are looking for shortcuts and you're probably lured by the three things that are holding down this world number one the pride of life number two the last of the eyes and number three the last of the flesh you want to cheat your way to success by getting quick money and you know joining all sorts of ponzi schemes you're always hearing this good idea this thing that is burning there is gold here there is gold there but you never want to hear topics that talk about work ethic that talk about working hard that talk about you know pushing yourself through the grind that talk about building an idea and working your way through the trenches you do not want to hear that but all you want is you know i want to hit this one big deal today you know that is how some people have gotten into witchcraft and you know they have done child sacrifice all in the name of getting wealth but there is a way that scripture has told us to you know to to get these things through it's not through cheating Vince Lombardi once said this if you cheat on the practice field you'll cheat in the game if you cheat in the game you'll cheat the rest of your life i don't think any of you want to be cheaters the rest of your life you don't want to be that guy in a public office who will you know want to cheat his way through the top want to cheat his way through building his properties want to cheat his way through doing all sorts of crazy things anyway i've come to remind you that the first thing as a youth or even an old person out there is to educate your mind everything to do with oneness in christ with the aspect of financial stewardship all starts with financial education the first ground to till is the ground of the mind instead of money controlling you you know I- I- instead of money controlling you you should be the one controlling it you should not be allowing the spirit of mammon to take over you because that is a spirit that is now ruling this world you see it's so crazy that a paper like red paper will sell more because some of their headlines are crazy they're talking about sexual crazy things and it will sell but you know that should not be your route it shouldn't be your route at all miles munro laid down some seven areas of wealth that i think are important to mention one of the areas of wealth that he said that we should have as number one is spiritual wealth it comes down to seeking god and his kingdom the other wealth is soul wealth that talks about intelligence earlier on i talked about you know educating your mind the other wealth is physical wealth having a healthy body the other wealth is social wealth your networks and your relationships i can guarantee to you that being in this studio today is because there is a person who knew someone who knew about this studio it all comes down to building social networks that will help us in one way or the other then there is influential wealth making a name for yourself and you know that comes along with doing certain things that you know are attributed to impacting lives transforming lives and empowering people then there is community wealth helping other people we all to help other people and then lastly talked about generational wealth some of those are very important things that i want to tell you go and research on them to improve yourself i want you to know this as well money does not come to you because you are good or a businessman or even that you are the most prayerful it comes to those who create goods and services it comes to those who meet a need in society it comes to those who fill a gap it comes to those who solve a problem the biggest problem with ha- we have with you millennials is that the whole notion of consumerism and the sense of entitlement has just trapped you no one owes you anything let me tell you you have been given a head start with the education you have 
your parents have educated you vuzi thembekao once said that you know it's not that you have had a bad background you have been educated as well you do not have a disadvantaged mind you do not have a disadvantaged mind so many of you actually waste money it's wasted away we have been taught by dev ramsey that personal finance is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge at the end of the day it comes down to lifestyle choices as laughing with you know the crew in this room and saying that some of them eat rolexes you'll find there are guys who pass by you know a rolex pala and every hour they are having one or two the air time you buy every day you know data gets over and you're buying more data on your phone to do what to gossip if some of you are buying it for something productive that is good your money is not wasted away you can make all the money but if you're not a good steward it will go to waste the man with one talent did not grow his money and what was he called he was called a wicked servant if you buy out of impulse and want to keep up with every jen john and jack then you'll not be able to build a nest egg no will you have no will you be able to support charities projects or even family members or even start that idea you have in your heart remember your dream is valid but because your lifestyle is wasting away resources that could push that you will probably never see it materialize now let me talk about the first model in a nutshell it's important to earn i don't know what you're doing to earn but as you build a savings culture earning becomes an important step the money from your parents from your uncles you know from your friends from even a charity will stop coming at a certain point you need to know that and you'll probably earn through a job that you will get or a skill that you will have offered or even a service that you will have offered or even a problem that you will have solved where there are problems know this there will somehow always be money if it's the kind of money that will come in daily that's earning if it's money that will come in weekly that's earning if it's money that will come in quarterly that's earning my lecturers once told me that you know there are three or four ways of earning you earn daily you earn weekly you earn monthly you earn quarterly and you know there are people even earn yearly as well proverbs 21 verse 5 says this good planning and hard work lead to prosperity but hasty shortcuts will lead to poverty There are three things that come out here. Number one, you have to plan well. Number two, you have to work hard. And number three, you have to avoid shortcuts, especially the get rich quick schemes. I say this, true wealth is built over time. We have to acquire the habits that help us build wealth over time. The habits are more important than the money. You know you can lose it all today and still be able to start because of the habits and the principles that you had built. Can you imagine that the landlord, the supermarket, the bills that you're paying out there are earning before you? Those guys have ideas that are you know pulling money out of your pocket. Where is that money that will come back to you? In the equation, you have to find a way of earning as well. You have to find a way of paying yourself. You know, getting paid from your deal and going out to KFC or going out to you know a serious restaurant out there is not paying yourself. That kind of reward is not necessarily paying yourself. There you're consuming. So it's important to consider paying yourself too among the different lists of bills to be paid. Such so you're able to earn and you know put aside money for your nest egg, for your idea, for that charity. And you know to be able to budget for these things. I want to talk about saving as well in a nutshell. I picked this quote while reading through some literature on Twitter and someone said this to master the world you must master yourself success requires consistent effort and consistent effort is impossible without self discipline discipline is your hedge against failed motivation do the hard thing especially when you don't want to you see it's important to sacrifice now so that you can be able to enjoy later but right now the problem with you and i the problem with the youth right now is that we want to satisfy our urges now we want to satisfy our our you know lusts right now we want to satisfy those things we have been dreaming for right now 
And that is leading many to do shortcuts and to cut out the habit of discipline. Serving is the act of putting money aside for the future. But let me tell you this, it requires top-notch discipline. And how is that discipline going to be? That discipline is going to start by you putting some money aside. And it's also going to require that at some point you're going to fail. You're going to actually stop saving. And you'll ask yourself, what's happening to me? But when you pick yourself up in those moments when you stop, that is when the discipline is actually built. You see that? That is when the discipline is actually built. However, we need to know this. Saving comes down to lifestyle choices. And I quoted earlier on that Dev Ramsey said, Personal finance is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. Listen to this. You cannot solve a behavior problem with a mathematical solution. No. I will keep giving you all the money you need, but you know, you'll keep squandering it. This is behavior. So you need to start practicing delayed gratification and start telling yourself, you know what? I have this goal. I have this dream. I have this book to buy this month. Let me forego, you know, getting this nice top. Let me forget, forego getting those nice steppers, those nice sneakers. You have to delay gratification. The first thing to do with money is not to spend it, but to save it. Benjamin Franklin once said this, that if you want to think of being wealthy, think of saving as well. You know, saving, as much as is not the best route to growing wealth, it's actually the starting point. Let me read for you this in Proverbs chapter 6. From verse 6 it says this, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores provisions in summer and gathers its food at the harvest. How long will you lie there, young person? How long will you lie there, you sluggard? How long will you lie there, you DYF person? How long will you lie there, you viewer? When will you get up from your sleep? Because verse 10 says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. The story of the ant brings it out in the simplest of ways. They have no ruler. This means you have to have self-governance as a young person, as an old person. Things to do with personal finance come down to self-governance. Listen to this. Laziness will kill you. Someone said this. An active mind requires an active body. A slothful body atrophies the mind and a dead mind destroys the soul. You are blessed with arms, legs, hands and feet so that you may move freely about the world. To receive such a gift and not use it is a sin. That's why they called the people sluggards. Slothful. Those who are sleeping. They say they turn on their beds like the hinges on the door. And such poverty will easily knock them. I tweeted this a few days ago. That when it comes to saving, have the long-term view in mind. Joseph instructed that a fifth or 20% of the produce be given to Pharaoh. And for seven years they saved. Those were the years of productivity. When you're earning, do you put some money aside? When you've gotten that gig or that deal, do you put some money aside? Those are your years of productivity. So ensure that you have a portion going out. And remember that there were seven years of famine. So for 14 years, this money took care of these guys. And not only was Joseph's own people saved, the neighbors within Egypt were also protected. And that's how generosity extends. When you have, you'll be able to help those in need. Key things to note. Start early. One of the beautiful things you have with you now is your age and your time. So start early. Stay clear of debt. Live below and within your means. Just saying no to things you can't buy with cash, overspending every month can dramatically impact your ability to save even for retirement when you get that, you know, job. Raise your standard of living slowly and budget like your future depends on it. John Maxwell says a budget is telling your money where it should go. Many of us don't want to do it, but I religiously budget and I actually write down my expenditures. Those things help me and they have helped me as a family to be able to do things in an amazing way. 
Lastly, I want to talk about investing. And we've all somehow invested in one way or another. You've invested your time. You've invested in reading. You've invested in many ways. You cannot save your way to wealth. But that is the foundation and the starting point. You have to do other things that make your money grow. You can invest in unit trusts. You can invest in a business. I once sold eggs, by the way, within the Golobi area here. And through the networks, I sold eggs and it's a very profitable business. That money was able to pay my rent and take care of my family. I did Uber using the card bought at some point, you know, uh, I did not have some money coming in. So I said, let me use this car to drive around and, you know, transport people. So I did Uber business. I've, you know, procured some some border borders to get into the transport business and it's also a good business yes every business comes with a challenge but these are some of the things you can do you could be a programmer and you know you want to you know develop applications start doing it and market your ideas you could be into media and you want to come up with a studio start doing it you could be a lady and you're into fashion what is stopping you from you know dressing people up and making them look good you can do any kind of business. It, 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 it does not require rocket science. All it requires is you to do your research very well. Start buying shares as early as you, you are right now. Start when you're young. Get into the unit trust and, you know, money markets. Start now. Start to leverage the power of compound interest. It's written in Proverbs 21 and verse 20 that the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Are you wise? Or are you a fool? My and me as a fool at some point are spending whatever I got. And I know many of you are probably in that boat. But you can choose to come to the camp of the wise. Because the wise people will always do wise things. It's written in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 2. Divide your portion to seven or even to eight. For you do not know what misfortune may occur on this earth. You know, right now we are still going through a pandemic. And misfortune has hit people in many ways. There are those who have lost jobs, those who have given up. There are those who have used this crisis as an opportunity. In, in, in Chinese, the word, the word crisis has two words. Danger and an opportunity. How can you leverage this pandemic period to probably start th something, to probably do something amazing that will probably become a franchise in the future? Let me tell you this as I close. No one owes you anything. Your parents educated you. You have learned whatever you've learned from your peers and friends and from whatever you've observed in this country and the world at large. The ball is in your hands. No one is going to shoot it for you in the hoop. It's you who is going to shoot it. No one is going to kick for you that ball. It's you who is going to kick it. No one is going to kickstart your dream apart from you. As Lupita Nyong'o once said, the dreams are valid. I want to remind you as well that your dreams are valid. And that as we build a good culture of financial stewardship, this will help us to give like no one else can give. It will help us to do amazing things out there and build shelter, you know, support those who are needy, visit those who are in prison, and, you know, help this country where things are broken. You and I can do that. Be blessed as you go out and transform, impact, and empower lives. Peace to you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Welcome back from the what? I'm very sure, I'm quite sure you are blessed. Kindly let us know in the live chat what blessed you the most. For me, it is. Please save. Don't spend all your money. Take off some and save. It's important that you save. So thank you for joining us for today's fellowship. Kindly subscribe to our channel. And turn on that cup button like a bell. That dong dong thing. <laughs> and yeah, you'll be notified whenever fellowship is on. And you keep in touch. Uh, it's time to give. Please give. It's important that you give. Support the fellowship. Give. <laughs> give, give, give. And these are the numbers that you can send that money to for people on MTN 0787 34 89 
And those on Airtel, 0708 66 14 70. 0708 hope you got that. The names are, the name is <laughs> Raymond Mukwezi. And please come back next time for fellowship. If you love the shirt, I'm putting on like this one. Hmm? One in Christ. You can also contact Raymond Mohezi for one. Thank you very much and stay blessed.